Anna Kendrick, Glenn Close, John Travolta. Our next guest has fabulous stories about them all. We're next talking to celebrity blogger Jason Leroy. Welcome. Hi, nice well, to be here. Well, let me let you know, since we're, we're dropping the names right at the yes. top of the show, let's get right into it. You say okay. you have a fabulous story about Glenn Close. I do, yes. Uh, so Glenn was in town last year for the Mill Valley Film Festival promoting her film Albert Knobs, uh, which she had worked many years to put together. Uh, she played, you know, she won an Obie playing it off-Broadway in 1982 and had been working ever since. And, and I was so excited to get to talk to her uh, because, of course, it's Glenn Close, so who wouldn't be excited? And uh, so, but it was supposed to be a round table when there was going to be like a couple of us and her because, I mean, she's, of course, she's a legend. And, uh, but then everyone else dropped out except me. And so it was just me. And Suddenly Glenn a one-on-one -on -one with Glenn. Suddenly a one-on-one -on -one sitting there alone with her in this hotel. And I was terrified, but also excited. And so <laughs> I, I sat so far from her. I sat so far. I like reached over and dropped my little recording device in front of her and sat back and I started to get my first question out. And I was like, I'm curious how your understanding of, and then she just goes, what did you think of the film? <laughs> and here's the thing is that I didn't really like it that much. And so now I'm in this really horrifying position of having to somehow out act Glenn Close. Right. And convince her that maybe I did like it. I didn't want to lie to her at the same time. I had this sense of maybe fan loyalty. Yeah, and, her, I don't and, her, know. and her publicist is probably yeah, right they're all right her. there. Yeah, yeah. And so, and I so I turned into this sort of crazy person where I was just finding really specific things to say that I liked about it. And but she just kept pressing me, maybe because I did not give her like a blanket. Oh, I loved it. Congratulations, kind of statement. And so she just kept pressing me with more and more and more questions. And so suddenly you're becoming the interviewee. Yes, the tables were turned by Ms. Glenn Close and I did not know how to respond. I just, I kind of blacked out. I don't remember all of it. I have it recorded <laughs> audio wise. So how'd That's you get it. out of it? Uh, eventually she sat back. It was almost like she sensed that she had gotten everything I had and I, it was just a dry well. I was just like laying there, just like useless. You're like a little wet bunny exactly. in a boiling she pot of water. Yeah, she, she had totally broken me in half. And then she sat back satisfied and was like, well, continue. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And then I got my questions back out and then awkwardly right, asked right, them. Right, and right. she sat there and humored me. Yeah. So now, why with all this torturous <clears throat> stuff that you have to go through, would yes. you want to be a celebrity blogger? And is that a bad thing to call you? You know, uh, I, 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 it seems to have turned out that way, the way that some of the stories but it that wasn't I've written. But it wasn't your career track. No, no. Uh, it, it's, you know, I, I'm just, I've always been passionate about pop culture just in general. And I love film. I love actors specifically. Yeah. I love watching good acting. I love trying to find words to describe good acting. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like to write about that. It's not really about the tabloid stuff that appeals to me so much. Uh -huh. Um, but that is not how my how things have worked out for me necessarily. I, right. I, I'm just my my own business, writing my reviews and my yeah, interviews, yeah, yeah. and then suddenly things turn gossipy, as now, they did with Rashida Jones. All right, so talk about Rashida Jones mm -hmm. and John Travolta. I'm sure you must be his favorite person. <laughs> <laughs> not yes, yes, right up there with with Joan Rivers, I think. Uh, well, you know, uh, it was just an interview. Uh, with Rashida Jones about a film that she stars in and co-wrote uh, co called Celeste and Jesse Forever. And uh, this was a few months ago. She was here in San Francisco. I was so excited to meet her because I think she is just a phenomenal, phenomenal actress. She's so smart. She's so funny. And uh, so, and when we had our conversation, it went so well. I was just in love with her. I was infatuated. And at one point, we were talking about Twitter because she um, got on Twitter to promote her movie. Of course. And, uh, and then she had sort of been openly grappling with it through her account, you know, not really understanding hashtags or at symbols, that kind of thing. And people were sort of, you know, being a little mean to her and trolling her about it. And so we were talking about that. She also tweets a lot about Frank Ocean and how much she loves him and admires him. So I mentioned Frank Ocean to her. And then her co-writer, Will McCormick, says sort of apropos of nothing, you know, like a big athlete or something should come out. And she was like, yeah, or a movie star. And he was like, yeah, just someone big. And she's like, right, like a movie star, like John Travolta. Come on, come out already. What are you waiting for? How many Masoras have to come forward? Let's do this. <laughs> and at the time, I was thinking like, oh, well, you know, that's kind of a, a that's, uh, that seems significant that she would say that just because. Yeah, I mean, because that's red meat. I mean, it got yeah. thrown right on your plate. 
she wasn't making a joke, you know, that's the thing, yes. is that it was not, it was not, because everyone makes jokes about that, and I think maybe that's why she thought that it was an okay thing to say, or at least a thing that would have no consequences, because who doesn't make jokes about that? Who doesn't mm -hmm. make references to that? South Park. Right, yep. exactly, exactly. You know, at, when Tom and Katie announced they're getting divorced, Joan Rivers tweeted, this is the biggest separation in Hollywood since John Travolta's ass cheeks in the massage parlor. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, you know, it's fair game, and I guess she was thinking that it was also fair game for her, but she made it as a matter-of-fact statement, and that's where it sort of broke that, that Hollywood glass closet kind of code mm -hmm. of, you know, you're not supposed to acknowledge it. And since she has her, having lived in show business her entire life, right. being the daughter of, you know, Rashid, uh, of uh, Quincy right. Jones and Peggy Lipton, I think people then read into it like, oh, well, what do you know? She knows. What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? And um, and I remember going and asking different friends around town afterward. I'm like, do you think it's significant that she said that to me? Is that like a scoop? And they're like, no, everyone knows that, don't they? And I'm like, I don't know. And uh, so I include it in the interview because I tend to run them as transcripts. I think it's more interesting to read a full conversation and just like watch the back and forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did not draw undue attention to it. I you wasn't. Just I didn't it. lead with it. I just included it where she said it. And, um, but then I did think, I wonder if I should send this to like Queerty or something. And so I did send it to Queerty and they ran it and then it got picked up by the HuffPo and then it got picked up by, it seemed like everyone after that. And the next thing you're, you're famous. And suddenly it's everywhere and I had like Inside Edition called me um, the day that it broke and asked me to sell them the audio and I felt kind of weird. Did you? Know, you? I did not. I did not because I felt like that would like, make it too... Sensational. So you still have the audio, and it's you haven't. I, ha I have the audio, and and they asked me shortly before she tweeted an apology because they sort of wanted proof, and I think they also wanted to just you know make the package better on their show. So she's totally distanced herself from it now. So you're she, hanging out there. I know. <laughs> she well, she ended up yeah. She 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 tweeted her apology. And that was the only thing that would have made me release the audio is if she had denied it. Right, right. Because then that would have called me into question. I would have had to yeah. be like, well, no, you did say that. But she, I thought she handled it. She did not actually say John Travolta is straight. Right. <laughs> she merely said that was a thoughtless thing for me to say. Right, right, which, right. Which, admittedly, it, it, it was under the circumstances. Now, we've only got a few moments left. Real quick, what is next for you? Now that you're getting this big profile, I mean, I've asked other guests, is there a reality show? Are we going to see uh, Jason <laughs> Leroy talking about... Uh, other maybe or maybe you know, not straight actors. You know, I would love. I, <laughs> I would love to. Um, I am uh, sort of in the beginning stages of starting some, uh, some maybe some more video blogging. Um, I tend to do very big, larger than life, Real Housewives recaps where yeah. I do like a one-man show of an episode. Well, and we will have you back to talk about that because my husband loves the Real Housewives <laughs> of New Jersey. <laughs> We've been speaking with Jason Leroy. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching. Ten percent. We'll see you.